These forests are now under threat. There's big money to be made from tropical timber. This forest giant's been growing here for between 100 and 150 years. The value of this tree when it's cut down to the landowner, the man who owns this tree, is only about eight pounds. When it's prepared and shipped out as timber, in the UK, it'll fetch a thousand pounds or more. Somebody is making a great deal of cash and it's not the people who own this tree. Papua New Guinea's forests are peppered with hundreds of remote tribes. It's those tribes and not the government who own the land and the trees. Tribal elders have a difficult decision to make. Keep their forests or sell the trees to the loggers. If we keep forests like this intact, we will reduce our chances of suffering the worst effects of global climate change and we'll save between 60 and 80 percent of all the world's species. For me, it's a no-brainer. In the cave, progress is slow and exhausting. They need to stop and refuel. The French have brought cheese, and the Brits, baked beans. Oh, please tell me you're not eating cold baked beans. What's the matter with you, man? Oh, oh you're all wrong. Well, I'll have some of that, that's fine. The French. No, the cheese, oh, the, the cheese fish. is good, the cheese is good. Not much. Oh, no! Oh, that absolutely turns my stomach. Smell that. I don't want to. This is actually pretty good for us. I mean, we've really just been having a chocolate bar for lunch most days. To actually stop and have cheese and crackers is, it's, it's luxury. Hey, you don't know you're doing one. <laughs> From base camp, two boats head upstream. Gordon's first stop on his search for birds of paradise is a remote village where the feathers are used for costume. Also on their way are George and expedition medic, Jane Stevenson. The boat's engines disturb a colony of bats roosting in the treetops. This is quite spectacular. These are flying foxes. They're the largest bats on the planet. They are just amazing. Look at the size of them. They must be have a wingspan of about that. They eat, I think it's exclusively fruit. When they eat the fruit and they pass through the seeds, so they are pretty much the species that is responsible for keeping this forest living and growing. Oh, wow. Fogamayu village is dominated by the extinct volcano Mount Basavi. Contact with outsiders is rare. <laughs> yeah, it's an unbelievable welcome. You just sort of quite overwhelmed when you arrive somewhere like this and so many people just turn out with just big smiles in their face. Is he a big man in the village, this man? He's the chief, I see. chief leader for Fogamayu. Uh, his name is Chief Ayako. These villagers know more than anyone about birds of paradise and where they display. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. It's Gordon. Pleased to meet you. So these feathers are from birds of, birds of paradise? Cassowary. OK. It's a very poor village of just 500 people. Medicines are in short supply. And there's been a severe outbreak of malaria. Here in this particular village, one of the biggest problems is access. They can't get out to hospitals, they can't get out to clinics, they can't get medicines brought in, uh, and everything is so expensive for them that health has actually had to take a kind of back seat, really, to just pure survival. While Jane sets up a makeshift clinic, George meets the village elders to find out what the future holds for them and their forest. First of all, I want to say thank you very much for 
us being able to be here in this fantastic forest land of yours. It has been a great honour. You own a huge area of, of valuable land. You could sell your land, you could sell your trees. What do you want to happen? What's the way forward? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you're sort of stuck because you want certain things. You want to pay for education and health care and yes, soap and things. Yes. But you don't have the means of earning the cash. <laughs> How many children die here? At Jane's clinic, the concerned mother has brought in her feverish child. We need to be sponging this baby down. And I'm going to test the baby for malaria, but it probably is malaria. It's one of the biggest killers in the tropics. Out here, mosquito nets are virtually non-existent. Can you see that there's two lines there? Jane's test confirms her worst fears. He is particularly vulnerable now. He has a raging fever. Um, and he has the worst type of, of malaria strain. This is today's dose. Okay, as soon as possible. Although the baby is, is getting quite upset with this, this is absolutely the best thing. This will potentially save his life, and without this, there's a very high chance that he will die.